Bonjour, bienvenue sur le plateau d'Informatic News pour notre rendez-vous le, le Grand Témoin. Et cette semaine, nous avons le, le plaisir de recevoir euh, Renan Alak, qui est CEO et fondateur de la société euh, Vast Data. Euh, Renan Alak, uh, good morning, because I, it's very early in the morning for you. You are based in California right now. Good morning. Thank you for accepting our invitation. So we're going to start uh, with presenting your company that maybe uh, some of the, our readers uh, don't know yet. Uh, Vast Data is still a startup company uh, focusing on uh, sto storage. Uh, you were founded in uh, 2016. You're You are based in New York, but you have offices in Israel. Um, you are using uh, only 100% flash uh, in your architecture. Uh, you raised uh, one year ago about $83 million for a valuation of your company uh, for about $4 billion. Uh, and you are about 300 employees. Uh, this is uh, roughly uh, what you, you, we can say about your company. Uh, could you uh, give us some more detail about it? Yes, of course. Um, as you say, we were founded back in 2016, so about six years old now. And uh, when we were founded, we took a while to interview uh, many potential customers Um, around their challenges in the storage and infrastructure space. And what we realized was that the old way of doing storage, which was basically a tiered approach where you had to choose for each piece of information how important it was uh, for your business, um, was broken, uh, mainly because it was becoming more complicated and expensive to manage at scale, but also because new workloads like analytics and machine learning and deep learning, what today is known as artificial intelligence, were emerging and they required fast access to all of the information. Uh, they could not compromise on the speed of access or the amount of data or the resilience of the system or the scale of the system. And so what customers were asking us to do was to build a single system that is faster than the fastest, that is bigger than the biggest, and much more resilient and easy to use, um, and still cost affordable, such that they can put all of their information on one system um, and have all of their data accessible to these new applications. Um, our main advantage in those days was that we started late. Um, breaking those fundamental trade-offs in storage has been a challenge for many, many years. And the fact that we had new technologies at our disposal, things like storage class memory and NVMe over fabrics and containers um, and low cost flash allowed us to re-architect uh, the state of the art in a way that we could provide that uh, system that customers were requesting. It took us a while to develop it, about two and a half, three years before we started selling the product. But then over the last three years, we've been growing in sales at a very fast pace um, as a consequence of solving these fundamental problems. Storage innovation probably about a decade ago. Um, and when the stars align in a way where there's a really hard problem to solve and existing systems cannot solve it, and it's possible to solve it, uh, that's when true innovation uh, can happen And we were lucky to be at such a juncture uh, when we started. And we're now seeing this wave of artificial intelligence uh, sweep through the world. And uh, we are riding that wave with our partners. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I watched a, um, a conference where you were talking uh, um, the Cube uh, last year. And somebody was asking you what was your goal uh, when you founded the Vast Data. And you said uh, in our original presentation, there was two things, flash on one side and tape on the other side. And there was nothing in between. And in 10 years, uh, the hard drive will totally disappear. So this was five years ago. And so you mean in five years from now, a uh, hard drive will disappear? Is that your prediction? I think even today, there's no longer a reason to uh, purchase new hard drives for enterprises, for the data center. I think uh, we've built a system that at the system level is more cost effective than hard drives are. And cost was the only reason, the only remaining reason 
uh, to go with hard drives. And so I, th I think we achieved that goal uh, sooner than expected. Um, there are obviously still hard drives out there, but there's no reason to buy new ones. And we have since expanded our ambition uh, to do a lot more than kill the hard drive at Fast Data. And, and um, I, I suppose with all you're saying, cost is not an issue anymore because, you know, Flash uh, using NVMe and NVMe over fabric uh, was still um, pretty expensive technology. So what you're proposing, it's not an issue anymore? That's correct. Even though the media is more expensive, we, through algorithms and metadata structures, are able to uh, squeeze more efficiency out of the media than what is possible with the hard drive alternative. And so at the system level, cost is no longer an issue. Uh, are you targeting companies that uh, need performance, that, that needs capacities, that needs cost-effective storage, or, or it doesn't matter anymore? Our sweet spot is companies that have a lot of information that require a lot of capacity. And if they also require uh, very fast access to that information, that's a big bonus because, as I said, we fundamentally broke that trade-off between price and performance, between capacity and data access. And so any company that requires both um, would find our solution uh, very beneficial. Okay. I can give examples. Sure. Um, in the, in the France market specifically, we have customers in the media and entertainment space. We have customers in life science, both medical imaging and genomics. Um, we have customers uh, more broadly in the financial services space, both hedge funds and large banks, um, government um, agencies here in the US, uh, quite a broad set of use cases. But what they all have in common is a lot of capacity and fast access requirements. Uh, do, does AI, artificial intelligence, uh, play a big role in your uh, solutions? I mean, is this from day one or you added uh, that uh, during on, on the way? It does play a big role. Wherever uh, these new types of workloads exist, wherever there's a GPU-based workload, we find that our solution is a very good complement to that. Uh, NVIDIA is one of our best partners. Um, and usually we would get our foot in the door. What we call the land deal will happen a around one of those types of workloads. And then subsequent to that, a customer would realize that this system is actually faster than tier one. This system is actually easier to use and more affordable than a backup system. And so we find customers expanding across various workloads very quickly thereafter. Okay. L last year, I think it was last year, you, you have ex exceeded um, the uh, hardware market, decoupling uh, software and hardware. Uh, did you do that? And, and uh, other companies have done the same, like Nutanix and Oracle, uh, they, they've done the same thing. Uh, is this for technical reasons, for financial reasons, for other reasons? Why, why did you do that? Uh, then, um, because you've done that, you, you need hardware partners, and you have a company called Avnet, and you were you told that that time that you were going to have new partners, do you, are you having new ones or are you still looking for some? Excellent question. So we did it because of our customers. What we realized was that the other uh, storage providers out there uh, were basing their business model on refreshes. Every three to four years, uh, you would need to refresh and uh, replace your old systems with new hardware just because that was the way for those companies to monetize uh, their uh, IP. And so they would mark up the hardware and they would sell you something that you don't really need. The existing hardware was just fine, but they wanted to sell a new system, which caused you to need to replace everything. It caused you to need to migrate your information between one system and another. Um, and it was very costly and very painful for the customer. What we came up with is what we call the infinite storage lifecycle, which basically means that you can keep adding to the same system and maybe 10 years from now as hardware becomes uh, obsolete, start removing from that system. But the system remains always online and your information is always accessible. 
And that allows um, the customer to have a much better experience. And so decoupling the hardware from the software allows us um, to do that and allows us to charge only for what the customer is actually using. Um, and so I think it is a win-win from that perspective. It is enabled by our architecture uh, that allows dislike parts to be added to the system over time. Um, the disaggregation between compute and state in our architecture is a big enabler for that. And we find this business model to be uh, very attractive to so, our customers. So what about uh, your partners? Yes, so Avnet was the first one, as you mentioned. And we've since added another partner um, for international fulfillment. And so uh, we have two today. And we're also working with some of the hardware OEM vendors um, in order to provide more hardware options for our customers over mm. time. Uh, if I uh, take the case of uh, pure software, I think they have, uh, they're still in the hardware business, but they have a kind of contract that uh, you, you sign for, you know, I made mean, five to 10 years, and then you don't have to pay for new hardware thing. I mean, they replace the thing when you need them. Uh, is that, you know, some trade-off between what you're doing, software, 100% software, and the hardware company? I think it is a different model for sure uh, than what others are doing. Uh, the way we think about it is we would like our customers to operate as if they were a public cloud provider. Mm -hmm. We want them to purchase the hardware at cost and to use it for the entirety of its lifetime. Um, and I think that message is resonating very well. Um, ever since we launched this new program a little more than a year ago, uh, we've been accelerating sales at uh, about 4x year over year. Um, we just closed our third year of sales uh, a month and a half ago. Um, and we reached a $300 million run rate within that third year. And a big portion of that growth is from existing customers. Our net dollar retention rate is 300%, mm -hmm. which to me is the best indicator that customers like the product, like the service, uh, like this purchasing model, um, which is causing them to come back and expand um, significantly over time. Yeah, but of course you need also new customers. You are not going to you know, keep the, uh, the existing customers. Uh, let, let's talk about uh, two partnerships you, you signed with, one was with NVIDIA and the other one with Commvault. Uh, with NVIDIA, well, everybody knows uh, who is NVIDIA, uh, you signed a, a, a partnership and, um, de for developing a new architecture called Ceres. Uh, could you give us a little more detail about that? Of course. So NVIDIA, as you say, uh, world-renowned, uh, the GPU company and now the AI company, especially on um, the hardware side. And we try to be a complement to that on the storage side and on the software infrastructure side, such that customers can deploy AI at large scale um, in a very simple manner. Um, what we've uh, announced with NVIDIA recently is that we will be the next uh, storage vendor to certify on their SuperPod uh, implementation. And SuperPod is basically their large-scale AI clusters. Historically, um, the only storage systems that were uh, fast enough to support SuperPod installations were parallel file systems that are a legacy from the world of high-performance computing. Um, what we realized was that there's a simpler way to do this over standard protocols like NFS and SMB. And um, what we also realized was that AI workloads are very different than your traditional HPC. And so we are the first non-parallel file system to be part of this program. And we are the first uh, storage system that was built from day one for these artificial intelligence workloads. And so we're really excited about this partnership. With Commvault, Commvault is a backup company, mm -hmm. a data protection company. And what we're realizing is that this architecture that we've built um, is lends itself to data protection use cases in very interesting ways. For example, everything in our system is immutable. 
And so we don't overwrite data. We don't change data as the application asks us to. We write the information to new locations and we point using a very rich metadata layer to the new locations, but also to the old. And so we can allow uh, going back in time when a mistake has been made or when a ransomware attack is in progress. And so partnering with data protection companies like Commvault is a natural course. And we find that customers love the combination of Commvault software and our uh, storage system. But so does that mean that you could uh, partner with uh, other backup uh, software company? That is correct, yes. Okay. Um, uh, are you targeting, we, we're going to talk a little bit about your competitors, uh, are you targeting the whole industry, I mean the whole storage industry, or are you targeting, focusing specifically on the, uh, you know, some segment of, the, of this industry? So when we started uh, three years ago, we did not have any features and advanced functionality. And so the target was very specific to customers that required high capacity and high performance and were willing to compromise on functionality. Over the last three years, we've added all of the advanced storage functionality that enterprises require, um, things like snapshots and replication and encryption and different protocols for Windows and Linux and Mac. Um, we added NFS over RDMA that allows uh, very fast access um, and overcomes the TCP barrier. And so today we have a whole solution that really does address the different types of workloads out there. And we are very close to that vision that we set out at the get-go of universal storage. And so we find that this system is actually better than existing systems for almost all storage workloads. Um, we don't do small. And so if you have 20 terabytes or 50 terabytes, that's not vast. Um, we focus on large deployments. We start at half a petabyte and we grow up to uh, exabyte scale uh, deployments. Today, our largest customer is already uh, nearing an exabyte, and so uh, those are the types of uh, opportunities that we like. Okay, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about France. Um, you, you just mentioned uh, you have a customer already in in France, but uh, I think you are in the in the process of uh, recruiting a regional sales manager. Is that correct? And uh, what are your goals for the French <laughs> for the French market? And how do you evaluate that market compared to uh, you know the other one in Europe, uh, Germany, and UK, for example? Yes, indeed. So we started our go-to-market in the U.S. and over the last two years, we've expanded into EMEA. Uh, we started with the U.K. and then we're expanding into France, Germany, the Netherlands, um, other areas in the region um, this year. Um, we have uh, a few uh, French customers already, as I mentioned, in the media and entertainment space, in medical imaging, in genomics. And we see a very similar uh, requirements and use cases in France that we see elsewhere, that we see uh, in the US and in the UK. And so we are now we have the advantage of knowing that these workloads work very well on our system, uh, thanks to our existing customers in other regions. And so we want to replicate that success in uh, in France. Okay. Uh, do, do you present yourself as a software storage company and do you think it's easier to sell software alone than software plus hardware? So we present ourselves as a software infrastructure company. Uh, we started from storage because we believe that is the anchor of the data center and the biggest challenges in terms of uh, artificial intelligence were around large scale data access. And so storage was a natural starting point. As we move forward, we're expanding into other layers of that infrastructure stack and providing more pieces of that puzzle uh, to our customers. Um, I do believe that software is where the interesting things are happening. Uh, we make sure to leverage uh, the best and uh, latest hardware um, that is at our disposal the same way we did 
with storage class memory and with NVMe over fabrics uh, four to five years ago, we're now doing with GPUs and with DPUs and uh, leveraging the hardware in the best possible way. But we do not have any hardware IP. All of our IP is in software. And as a result, that is where our value is. And that is what we sell to our customers. And, and because cloud is a main, one of the main trends uh, today, I suppose for you, it's going to be uh, a lot easier to uh, partners with uh, AWS or Azure, Microsoft or Google or the other ones. Uh, do you still do you already have some uh, agreement with these uh, cloud provider? Or are you working on that? Definitely. What we see uh, our customers want is uh, the ability to access their information from wherever the application may be, whether that's on the private cloud side or on the public cloud side or at the edge or in the device. Uh, we mentioned uh, genomics companies before. Uh, they want the sequencer to be part of this global namespace. And that is our intention to provide a very easy access to the information and to have the application level not need to worry about where the data may be and how to move it across geographies. Um, the infrastructure level needs uh, to manage all of that for it in a seamless manner. And so um, as we progress, you will see from us more and more integration with public cloud providers, with the edge um, in a way that makes our customers' lives a lot easier. Okay. Um, uh, to to finish this uh, conversation, uh, I I've read different things about you and your company, and uh, in the uh, Hall of Fame Innovation Company, your I think uh, I know Thinking Machine is one of them. Uh, do you think it would be fair to say that Vast Data will be a successful Thinking Machine company focusing on soft on on storage? I think um, that's a very flattering comparison. Um, I what? wouldn't have made it myself um, because of the ambitions of uh, that company more than uh, what they actually ended up building. Um, I think timing is everything in this business. And I think uh, in 2022, um, we are closer to realizing uh, Thinking Machines vision than they were uh, back in the 80s. Um, and every day, every week, we see advances in AI uh, that are very, very uh, exciting and surprising. And if we can get machines to do not just the repetitive tasks, but also the creative tasks that uh, humans uh, tend to have a monopoly on uh, today, I think uh, very, very interesting things can happen. And what we've seen over the last decade is that in many cases, it's the same algorithms that have existed for 50 and 60 years that are now coming to life because of fast access to a lot of information. And so our part in that is enabling these new algorithms and the old algorithms in ways that uh, they weren't able to be successful before by providing uh, an infrastructure that was built for these types of activities. And so, yes, not just on the storage side, but as we progress and go up the stack, uh, we want to provide the best possible infrastructure that will enable uh, these new innovations at the application. Uh, layer. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Because things are going so fast, maybe we, we will be able to talk uh, maybe very soon. But um, Renan Halak, thank you very much for the uh, conversation. Thank you.